What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the Brown Gent. In this video, I'm going to give you an update and talk about Eigenlayer and why I think it's so important, if you can, to consider getting into this protocol. I'm going to remind you of how to sort of do this, why I think it's important, and what I see going forward, and how you can earn multiple airdrops at the same time. But remember, nothing I say here is financial advice. Do your own research as always and if you want more support guidance and all that we've got a special group called the web3 secret society check that out in the youtube memberships now this entire video is going to be based on ethereum i mentioned this because there's a bunch of people every time i post a video on ethereum go i wish i knew it was an ethereum based video so i could click off for those of you who sort of understand my approach here i don't care about the sort of specific technology. I care about ways to make money. And the reason I'm talking about Ethereum is because it is the, it is basically the token that has had the least appreciation in the entire space in the top 20 in this cycle so far. Most tokens have 3x, Bitcoin went up 50%, Ethereum went up like 20 something percent. If you look back in um, sometime in the summer, we were sitting around like 2000 bucks already, 2100. The, the fact of the matter is Ethereum has not done well. And yes, people will tell you, hey, um, it's just over for ETH. ETH sucks. Gas fees are terrible. And they're not being fully honest with you. The reality is that's what pe people just love to sort of spout narrative points. They love to talk about why things suck and why things aren't great. And that's why when things are down, no one looks into them. But the, the silent, the people who are actually buying it are very silent because they're not your friend. No one here is your friend. That's the reality of this. And I, I want to keep reemphasizing this. No one is out here for the most part trying to look out for you. This is why I say like always, always get multiple sources. Even I have conflicts of interest sometimes because I have a private strategy group. So sometimes I'm like, well, can I tell them like everything I want to? Because then I feel like I'm also taking away from the people in our membership. But I'm very transparent with you guys on exactly what I can share and what I will share. And let me tell you something. Ethereum, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated coins of this cycle. So just by holding it alone, you stand to see incredible price appreciation. And don't tune out the stupid people who will tell you all these like things about Ethereum around gas fees because you know there are different technologies being worked on. When's the last time we heard this? I remember back, I, I, was, um, I was in Fiji. And uh, there was that whole FTX scandal. Solana dropped to $10. Everyone said it was dead. Anyone who bought it, people will call you them stupid. This token's over. FTX just completely ruined the whole thing. They're dumping everything. You have to be an idiot to buy it. One year later, or maybe a year and a half later, just look at what's happened to Solana. The people over here, there were some people who were advocating for it down here. And guess what happened? They got laughed at, they got clowned on, they got called stupid. Much in the same way people who talk about Ethereum get clowned on. So what happens? They stop talking about it, they just accumulate. Other people also who may be even clowning on people accumulate silently, but don't say anything. You'll know because if you go on their uh, Twitter, they've deleted a lot of their tweets, but we got the Wayback Machine. I'm not gonna call out anyone here, but there's so many of these influencers who like said, Solana's dead, Solana's dead, and then they say, if you look at their post now, I gave you Solana at $10 and now it's 100 But they, in fact, were saying it was terrible and they were keeping you from buying it. So while I'm not saying anything uh, we can predict the future, just don't listen to these stupid people who like can tell you they can predict the future. Because the other thing is, a lot of this is human behavior. We cannot, like, I cannot tell you, like, how a meme point is going to do because I cannot tell you how humans are going to react to certain things. That's just the reality of it. And anyone who tells you any differently is lying. They're always lying because they want your views. They want your eyeballs. They want your clicks. They want whatever. They're always trying to monetize every single one of you. This is why I'm so passionate about this because when I didn't know anything about crypto, I would fall for all of these things. I, went, I spent one entire cycle following influencer after influencer and getting screwed and screwed, which is why near the end of that cycle, I started a YouTube channel. Sorry for that rant, but basically I just wanted you to take away from this. This is the period that people said Solana was dead, it was terrible, whatever. Look at it now. It's probably one of the most thriving ecosystems. It's had some incredible airdrops, Jido, Wen, Jupiter recently. There's a bunch of fun around Jupiter. That's also BS. I wouldn't worry about it. 
So that's why I want to talk about ETH today. So if you're still with me, I think ETH is going to do extremely well in this cycle. They've got a ton of L2s. I can't, like, you know, they literally pop up all the time, right? There's like Chroma mode, um, you know, all layer. There's, uh, you know, our Arbitrum, Polygon ZK, like, like, there's, like, there's so much. There's ZK, they're, they're like ZK Sync. Uh, optimism they're doing so much work and they are going to continue to make this protocol better and ethereum is a gas chain for pretty much all of these things so ethereum is like your sort of day-to-day -day spending money that being said today we're talking about eigenlayer and how you can power it um just so you guys know i am not the best when it comes to explaining the full in-depth of the technology that is not my expertise uh, you know, sort of one of the things I will always talk about is the Pareto principle. How much do I need to know to make an informed decision? If I can know like, you know, 20% of the things that are the most important, do I need to know how the nodes connect and how like this goes here and that goes there? No, I need to know the, the, the most critical questions, get that answered and that will get me the results I want. And that's sort of what I always preach to you guys. I'm sure you guys have a lot of things to do. You can't be experts on everything. There are people out there, I'm sure even after posting this, who are in the comments below going, well, you didn't mention this, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Honestly, I don't think it's as relevant. I have linked all the information. If you'd like to do a deep dive, please go ahead. I just don't have the time to sort of read this, memorize it, and do that for every protocol, okay? So basically, Eigenlayer is a restaking protocol. So what that means is you take ETH that you sort of stake somewhere else, and you restake it and sort of why would you do that right so the whole con the concept of eigenlayer is they wanted to like sort of extend the security and trust of the other apps with a bunch of validators so you lower that like network startup you cut management costs you cut out complexities and I, it's really cool because here's sort of the takeaways right you sort of um it's like combats security scalability concerns capital efficiency issues and plateauing staking rewards. So there's all this stuff here. Like I said, the tech people, I'm sure you guys love it. That's not my uh, expertise and I'll be honest with you. So you can read all this if you'd like. The whole concept here though is why Eigenlayer? Like if you're somebody who has Ethereum, so let's say you're okay, I'm okay holding Ethereum. Why Eigenlayer? So there's a lot of speculation on an airdrop, whether or not it's coming, we don't know. They are giving eigenlayer points. And while they say there's no air, they said that a few months ago, there's no airdrop announced, that, that means nothing. Like we see that all the time. And you just look at how they're tracking rewards. So they are, they are providing, they're providing a sort of like um, incentive for people to stake. Now I'm not gonna go over what eigenlayer is again, but basically if you want to get these restaked points, you can get them in multiple ways. There are tons of different protocols, all offering their own staked form of Ether. Now, Eigenlayer is so popular that they literally reached capacity on everything. Like, that should tell you something. People may not be talking about it, but most people want to get into this, keep their money here, keep it sort of like, you know, safe, right? They staked their Ether somewhere else on one of these platforms that you see here. They then deposit it in Eigenlayer and they earned restaking points. Now, when is this airdrop going to happen? I can't tell you because I don't know. My goal here, though, is to sort of look and maximize my opportunities. So the first opportunity is by staking ETH. You're like, for me, in my opinion, I'm holding a token that I think is going to appreciate a significant deal. Number two, I'm increasing my number of restaked points on Eigenlayer. And number three, I qualify for other airdrops. And let me just show you an example. So you guys know yesterday I put maybe yesterday or the day before I posted a video on alt layer. Well, a few weeks prior, they had actually had a claim for eigenlayer restakers. So basically, if you had a minimum of 720 points, this is the tiers and you earned alt token. And it's not surprising because a lot of protocols are going to go this way. These what better way to show that you're actually supporting the ecosystem and the network and everything else than by supporting eigenlayer which is going to be the fundamental bedrock for supporting like a lot of these up and coming protocols so 
the the really terrible part was because there was a shift from the sort of bear market to when Bitcoin did really well or started doing really well. And as such, when all this stuff started becoming a little more popular, if you did one ETH, which is what I did getting in here, you didn't get the 720 points to qualify. And when I went to bump it up after, like I, I decided a few days later, hey, I should bump it up. It was already capped on everything. So I was out of luck. Now, it's very important to say this because on February 5th, they are unpausing their restaking window. So you have from February 5th to 9th, if you're interested to take your staked Ether and put it into Eigenlayer. And don't be like sort of foolish here. It That window is probably way shorter than you think. If you've watched my like Milk Tia videos on Demex Exchange, that stuff fills up so fast. It, I expect this to be very similar because they have a capacity on each. Once those are reached, that's pretty much it. So this is Eigenlayer, and this is sort of what you see. I'm sitting at 924 points, but the reality is it's not like that didn't qualify me for the last alt layer airdrop. Hopefully this qualifies me for future ones, but I'm going to bump this number up. These are rookie numbers. And you can literally go into any of these like here, like I'll put swell. And right now it says deposits are paused. So I'm going to show you like why I'm picking swell over everything else. That being said, you can decide to pick whichever one you want. Every single one of these platforms has their own rewards, has their own lockup periods and stuff. If, if they're applicable, like Pendle is probably the worst. It's not here, but it's for something else that we'll talk about. And then probably the other thing here is also you got to ask yourself, what about those platforms? Is there anything to look forward there? So I'm using Swell because I like Swell. Swell actually has an airdrop stated or, you know, it's, it's supposed to come out in quarter one of 2024, which is where we are. Now, they have Swell ETH and they have restaked Swell ETH. I'm going to talk about the differences because restaked Swell ETH just launched. I spent so much time trying to figure out the differences and like sort of what's the advantages, pros and cons. I'm probably not going to get this perfect. So if I, I misspeak, please in the comments below clarify. But having sort of I don't want to say interviewed people, but having had a ton of discussions with people after being in a ton of Discord chats, reading a bunch of documents, I have a rough idea of sort of what the differences are. And I'm also going to talk to you about why I'm going to stand pat and pick Swell ETH. But if you guys are interested, the Swell network, basically what you can do here is when you go to stake your ETH, you can see over here, chapter four, which is where we're approaching, Swell City. Voyagers redeem pearls for Swell and take their rightful place in Swell City. So Swell is their obviously their token, their token generation event. I've done okay. I've actually had 56 referrals who've minted 47 uh, SW ETH because I made a video about this about a month, yeah, about a month and a half ago. Got 845 pearls. Now you get pearls for every, like, so I get uh, 10 pearls for anyone who sort of mints SW ETH through my link. Being, I want to be very transparent with you guys. That's what I get. Like I said, I'm here to show you the benefits. If you don't like Swell, you want to go somewhere else, go for it. Um, you're also getting 30 pearls for like every SW ETH and actually every SW ETH as well, not just the new restaked one. And I'm going to explain a bit of all of that. But all you got to do is go to the stake button. So like, let's say you decide you want to stake or get SW ETH. You click stake. It takes you here. You basically swap your ETH. And I'm going to show you, like if I put 0.1 ETH here, I get 0 0.095 and you're probably like, wow, I'm losing like, um, what is this? I'm losing like the 5%. Yeah, I'm losing like 5% of my ETH here. Is it like, what's going on? And it's not actually that because the way this token works is you don't actually earn rewards like, like typically where you have to go claim. The rewards are actually infused within the value of SW ETH. So SW ETH is actually like a kind of a ratio of ETH. So right now, if I made this, I wonder if I can do the swap. Uh, how do I do it? If I was to unstake, um, it doesn't let me do it here. But basically what this means here is like right now, one ETH would get me 0 0.95 W ETH, which is, you know, you do the inverse and you'll find out exactly how much that is worth. 
So the value of like, you'll still keep the same number of SW ETH in your account, but how much ETH that is worth, worth continues to go up. It started at one, it will continue to go up. Now there's a whole document section we can go to, but I really want to get into sort of what is swell ETH and what is, um, sorry, what is, yeah, swell ETH and what is restake swell ETH. So they just launched restake swell ETH, like literally like three days ago. And one of the biggest benefits here is it will get you the eigen layer restaking rewards without the need to lock your liquidity. What is also really cool about it is from what I understand, and maybe I'm sort of uh, missing the point here, but I think just by holding this, even without restaking it in eigen layer, it is automatically sort of delegated to them. So what that means is you're earning the points from them. So even if I believe eigen layer is capped, so if you're here and it's capped and you have RSW ETH, you are able to earn those points up here, the restake points. Here's the difference though. There will be some fees that are associated with this because they tell you it's 0%, but when you look into it, it's zero fees for 30 days from the launch. So it's very critical that we know exactly what those fees look like. Because remember, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Why would Swell Network offer something that was just inherently better? So from what I understand so far, Swell ETH is very like basic. You take, you stake Swell ETH, sorry, you stake your ETH, you get Swell ETH, you take Swell ETH over to Eigenlayer, you deposit it here, you earn the points, and that's it. What they're saying with RSW ETH is you get RSW ETH, you're already doing all that. Just by buying this token, you reduce the steps. Then you can take this and put this on another platform. And I believe right now Pendle has the platform for this where you sort of lock up 60% for like six months or something and you get some extra additional rewards. Now, I'm not a fan of locking things up for a long period of time. If Ethereum goes like 2, 3x and let's say you want access to your funds. Remember, I always tell you opportunity cost, your liquidity matters. So I typically would not be utilizing something like this and the APRs on that are not even worth it. So they're basically saying, you're going to pay us more money so that you can use this and stake somewhere else. Why would I do that if I now have to lock up my liquidity for a period of time? There is a lockup on Eigenlayer, but it's very small. We'll talk about it. But if you had to do that, it's, it doesn't seem worth it to me, in my opinion. So that's why I, I want to keep it sort of basic and go to sort of swell ether. Um, right, like I said, 100% staking yield you get now. You pay zero fees up to 30 days. Now, what and 100% eigenlayer restake points. Swell passes on all the points earned from eigenlayer directly. So right now, for me, in my opinion, it's not worth doing it. Maybe if you watch this video on February 10th, 11th, and you can't get an eigenlayer and you want to do it, then this becomes more of an enticing option because if you're unable to enter the platform of eigenlayer, this will allow you to get the points. At least from my understanding, maybe they will update us when the cap reaches if that changes sort of how this works. Now, uh, let me just go here. Uh, swell rewards. So how does restake your Swell ETH with Eigenlayer, right? So we talked about the first step, you get your Swell ETH, you go to Eigenlayer, you deposit it, you confirm, you monitor your rewards. And the one thing I want you guys to know, um, so you get 30 pro restaking bonus per SW ETH deposit on Eigenlayer. And obviously it's a, more, it's a smaller fraction depending on sort of what you put in. And you get ongoing pearls at the normal rate for uh, restaking SW ETH on Eigenlayer. Now, there is a lockup period. So there is a seven day lockup period on Eigenlayer, which means you have to sort of wait. You say, I want to withdraw. You wait seven days and then you get it. That's pretty much the sort of time that you'll need. So if you do need that liquidity later, just keep that in mind. But on this side, SWETH can be swapped instantly. So once you get that back, you can go back and sort of get your SWETH back to ETH. So I would not sort of worry about it. Here it is. There's no lockup period on SWETH. But once you unstake from Icon Layer, there is a seven day waiting period before you can withdraw your funds. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to get through. 
at the end of the day, like, hey, if you want to use my link and sort of support the channel and everything, you can. You can see up here, I've got two SWE so far. I plan on getting a bunch more as we get closer to February 5th. I literally have this on my calendar, just like I do an NFT mint, because I do not want to risk it capping out right away. And this sort of sets us up for the long-term future. Remember, Ethereum, I think it goes up from here. I think it does very well, not financial advice. I want to qualify for potential airdrop with Eigenlayer. So if they have an airdrop, I want to qualify for that. And then other platforms as they launch, I want to have higher number of restate points to qualify for this. And then I want to get the swell token when they, sorry, go down here. As they get down here, I want to bump up my pearls, right? So tell your friends if you're choosing this one to go for that. And then you can sort of bump up your swell city through your referrals and your deposits and all of that. And then that's sort of a plan that I have in motion. Like I said, I have, I don't know the intricacies of all of the other sort of platforms out there. I know I tried Lido5, it didn't seem that great, but there's so many. And I mean, I would stay away from Binance and Coinbase. I mean, you already know how I feel about valid, like central exchange validators but maybe there are other ones that are just as decent. So you got to ask yourself that question. And this is sort of what I think is a really good opportunity. There are some people who talk about nodes and stuff, but I think that's super complicated. We're here for something simple. Let's make sure that we take advantage of this, like, you know, it's almost like a four prong approach um, opportunity. And I think anyone who just sort of looks at this and goes, oh my God, it's Ethereum, it's dead, is an idiot. And I'm not saying they're like, like when people say this stuff, I'm not saying you ignore it, but like try to understand exactly where they're coming from. Sometimes they're just disappointed in sort of, you know, Ethereum's price performance. A lot of us have noticed this. Look at this. Look at all your other tokens. How come they're all doing so much better here? And Ethereum has not really seen that love. One thing you should also know is as these protocols continue to suck up the Ethereum, from the network through staking and everything else there's less ethereum available on the market which means the order book is much lighter which means every single buy pressure will make significant impact on the price anyways uh i've actually got a poker game to go to so i will open it up for questions see what's in the comments and i gotta admit i gotta run uh let's see what's going on um good afternoon hey hey gene how's it going um Wait, wait, you're not my friend, bro. I thought we were friends. No, listen, I'm here to look after you guys. I'm talking about everyone else. And you know what? I'm saying this because even with me, as much as like, maybe you like me, maybe you hate me, just be critical of everything I say. You've got to sort of, how do I put this? You've got to be a little more critical because remember, this is a player versus player game. That's what crypto is. So when people tell you to buy after them, they're telling you to protect them. They're asking you to be their shield. When people start viewing this like a video game, you start realizing that maybe I shouldn't do half the things I'm told to do because it benefits others. Maybe it might benefit me slightly, but it benefits people much more. And who do I trust to go in a battle with? You know what I'm saying? Uh, how much ETH do we need to participate? There is no minimum. Obviously, uh, however much ETH you put in, you will get a sort of ratio to uh, eigenlayer points accordingly. Uh, if you can spare it, like here's sort of one of the approaches you could also have. Um, Let's say, you, let's say you can't really afford to leave ETH for a long time there, but you have a couple ETH. Then I would put a couple ETH there, let that get, get restaked, move it up, earn front load the points, and then reduce the amount you have staked. That way you qualify for more airdrops. That's really the goal, right? Like we don't know how much the future gates will be. Alt layer really went uh, to the extremes, right? Like 35 either staked or milk tier cumulatively across a wallet. In this case, 720 points for the lowest tier. We don't know. TMP says, hey, how's it going? Dijon Pilot, I got 100, wow, 1,800 pearls and 3,400 eigen. Dijon Pilot, how is your alt layer airdrop for that? I would love to know. Don't fade the Magpie ecosystem. They have a eigen layer type thing now. Eigen Pie, yeah. So I honestly don't know enough about that. But, um, you know, that's really cool. No, it's good to know. Um, I started with Swell with one ETH and put one ETH in Kelp DAO, one with AetherFi, so three possible airdrops. Is the Kelp DAO and the AetherFi, um, I think, I, I know I got sent the Kelp DAO dashboard. I have that one actually on the screen. When, when are there airdrops? The reason I bring this up 
Swell's airdrop is literally like upcoming. It's in Q1. So I'm trying to maximize that. And as you know, I probably will not be holding a single Swell after the fact. I will sell it. If, I, if it's worth significant, I will get ETH. I'll get some ETH and sort of put that back into the ecosystem. What will happen on February 5th? Well, they're just going to open up deposits. So like, let's say you go to Eigenlayer today and you're like, okay, I want to deposit, I don't know, some swell staked ether. Cause I got that on this platform, right? I have two here. I'm like trying to click, it won't let me. And then you look here, deposits are paused, even though I have two uh, staked or swell staked to sort of put in there, right? And right now the current ratio, where is it? I currently have 1.05 SW ETH in here. I want to put more. I want to get this up to 10. When I stake Tia for Milk Tia or Solana for Blaze Soul, sorry, is, is sorry, is that a question? Um, I, I'm a little confused by that question, Mark. Uh, was that a statement or, or were you asking if like that earns you something? Because all of those earn you something, right? When I stake Tia for Milk Tia or Soul for Soul Blaze, do I have to return the Milk and Soul Blaze when unstaking? Or is the Milk Tia and Soul Blaze I receive? So what happens is um, when you stake these, it's very much very similar. So, uh, you know, you put Soul, you get B-Soul. And then that B-Soul earns you airdrops. And then you stake that or you restake that into something like Camino Finance, right? Um, there's a few other protocols. I use Camino Finance uh, for this. Uh, Tia for Milk Tia. Milk Tia is more of, of a, a different beast because Milk Tia is just to earn the milk airdrop for, for Milky Way Zone. And um, a part of this is you can, instead of lending Tia out, which one of the things I want you guys to notice, every single one of these is an arbitrage. So when you trade Tia for Milk Tia, if you then lend your milk Tia, you get a much lower APY than if you lent Tia. The same thing with lending Soul versus B Soul because you're getting paid off for that. So just remember that. You'll actually see significant differences because obviously the unstaked token, Tia, Soul, whatever, gives you significant amounts. But you're, when you do this stuff, you're banking on earning rewards and airdrop points and whatever. And those other protocols are actually taking that and they're the ones who are staking it and getting sort of the money. So they're earning off your dime. All of these protocols are like working like the banking system where they get you to put your money in for a small percentage. And then they take that and turn around and lend that to others for a way higher percentage. You know what I'm saying? That's why like when I look at LSD protocols, when you lend, you get like nothing. When you win, like when you're supplying. But when you're borrowing for them, you're paying like through the nose. It, it's so like challenging, you know? Um. Thanks to uh, thanks for Stride Tia's staking pay guide. Is the staking rewards out for today? I'm unable to get to the Stride Tia staking page. You know what? Let me just check. Uh, I'll open it up. Um, this morning when I checked, by the way, um, if you go on DeFi Llama, I think I showed this yesterday, but you show if you go to DeFi Llama and you open up Stride, you can see like how much TVL goes in, right? So when you look at the TVL. Yesterday, we were at 12.3 million. Earlier, we were at 17. Uh, let me just bring this up over here. So you can see here right now, we are sitting at 18.2 million Celestia, which if you look at the ratio, it's like potentially like maybe like 64%. Uh, you would likely get about 63 to 64% of what you did yesterday in rewards. I'm going to go over there and check it out actually for myself and see how, I'm, how I did today. But that's what I expect. I just got to connect my wallet. And then I'll bring it up on screen. Uh, stride. Why is this not working? I see what you're saying. The website looks weird right now. Hold on. I'm not sure what happened. Um, airdrop. No. Yeah, I I'm having the same issue right now of, of getting to the actual page. I don't know if anyone else is, but the link is gone to see. But I, I, I'm sure it's just some sort of update, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, we'll see. Um, let's see here. Not many people have three. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So, Tom, the thing is, that's why I say Eigenlayer is better because 
it's only through a week and you get more eth too so like if you have sw eth the you get more eth from that sw eth uh given the time period so whenever you need it you can do it and that's why i also want to do this for ethereum because this is a token that has way more upside than downside do you know what i'm saying versus another token that may have went 10x they're more likely to have more downside than upside given the recent appreciation if you have 10k how much would you allocate towards eigenlayer versus other airdrops so that's a very complicated question and that's not one that i'm able to answer like very succinctly i am making a video talking about how to prioritize so when i do that i will cover this because there are certain things you want to cover your bases on right like i think having a celestia allocation is very important having your you know injective allocation your atom allocation i think eigenlayer is also like very good i i think if you have eth eigenlayer is probably the best spot to sort of do that and you know swell network or any of the other any of the other options so if you want to use swell use my link below go for it if you want to use like any of the other ones sure i'm saying swell because i know the airdrop is q1 2024 and i want to maximize on that one right now i think this airdrop is only good for people who already hold eth and just stake them well i think a lot of people are remiss in not getting any ethereum whether you like here's the thing you don't need three ethereum i i just gave i, I didn't even say three ethereum I, for me, I put two, right? And I'm saying I want to put more, but even 0.1 Ethereum will help you. Like, I think every single person would be foolish not to have some Ethereum in their portfolio. And if you have that, why not take advantage of this opportunity, earn some pearls, earn some um, eigenlayer restaking, and earn some appreciation when ETH goes up, not financial advice. Got it, thanks. Yeah, not a problem. I hope I could stake on Eigen and STTF, but I have very low capital. That's why I will unstake my five STTF. Yeah, so STTF is getting worse and worse. And I think once we get to about, I think it's like around 30 million TVL, I'm probably going to unstake as well. And I'm going directly to put in Milk Tia. And here's why Milk Tia is a one to one with Tia. I'm going to make a video on this, anyways. But Milk Tia is one to one with Tia. And in my opinion, like if you're getting the same things as you would staking with a validator, I might as well maximize my milk token as well. So for you, if you if you have five Tia, um, you know, like all layer did show us that you know some protocols will ask for thirty five as a minimum. Hopefully that's not the case. It sucks that you know a lot of the farmers took advantage of this. You really have two options. If you want to still hold Tia, I would put this in milk Tia, and just keep that there. If you can deposit that in Quasar Finance or uh, Demex exchange i would look at that and the reason for that is you know they give you additional rewards i have a video on this just uh, look it up on the channel the other option is saying hey i'm priced out of tia i won't have the sort of necessity in terms of amount and look at putting that somewhere else this is also why i tell you guys like <sighs> the opportunities on chain like so i get these comments sometimes right like I want people to be clear, I'm not a whale, and I'm also not trying to help whales, right? So it, it's hard when you have, like crypto, things are getting more and more expensive. Maybe six years ago, a poor person come super rich through this. Right now, somebody without a bunch of money can still make money, they just can't go to the hot spots. It's, you can't, like, it's so hard to go to an EVM chain or like IBC or Solana and make significant amounts of money. A lot of people on Twitter will lie and pretend if you if you're in that situation like arnold here's my recommendation low capital maximize your test nets if your capital is low maximize your time there are a ton of test nets look up look up arrows i'm going to say these things look these up after and look their campaigns up on galaxy if they have them arrow scraper dop protocol um bear a chain uh there's a ton like I don't know why I'm blanking on some of them. Oh, like Yaka Finance. That's not Yaka Finance is like probably one of the freest. Like it's free, but we know that an airdrop is like on the horizon. Dot Protocol, I think, has one more, one or two more days to go before they lock theirs up as well. There's also Mavia. Mavia, you just gotta like, don't download the game on your computer. Download it on your phone. Um, you can actually look. Go to the official site, uh, the Twitter, the official Twitter. They have a thread. Make sure you make sure you check the Twitter uh, name and shit. Um, but then what you can do there is you just download the game on your phone, do the quick tutorial and just log into your social account, connect it. It tells you how to do it. 
don't download anything on your computer. You, I mean, you won't have to. These guys are safe anyways, but I don't like downloading stuff on my computer. Don't want to slow stuff down and whatever. Look at that. Maximize test nets. Maximize those and then use that capital. Try to look at chains that are not very popular. An example I'll give you on Monday, Yaka Finance had their mint. Leading up to it, no one cared. And I was able to, I won two whitelists. <laughs> I gave one, I gave one away. I gave one back because I won two. And I minted for $60 in NFT and sold it for almost a thousand bucks and, and actually kept going up, but like, or not a thousand, like 890 or whatever, but still it was incredible. And that's because we were off chain. Why people have to download wallets like compass, leather, whatever. It's not like everyone has MetaMask. Pretty much everyone has phantom at this point, And most people have Kepler. So the opportunities there, they tend to end up getting very diluted or you get tons of whales taking advantage of it. So that's why all these like airdrops that are dollar based are challenging. And I want people to understand, like people post in comments, oh my God, how can this help people? I'm here talking about opportunities and like how you can get yourself an allocation. Because honestly, remember opportunity costs. So if you're getting nothing from your money, this is better. And I'll always tell you that. That's also why I post a lot of videos around Say. I think Say is a huge opportunity. I think people are going to eventually realize that and then it's going to get diluted again. So if you don't have the capital, really fo like you you can you need one of two things. You either need to have time or capital. If you have both, amazing. If you have one, great. You can use one to make up for the other. If you have neither, well I don't know what to tell you. Like there's nothing there's nothing you can do that. That's just the honest truth. Okay. Um, Eigenlayer could be a big airdrop. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of Twitter people say stuff, but I honestly don't care. That's why I sold some of my stone ETH for Manta at some 4 to 6% loss to stake for Eigenlayer points. Yeah, I mean, wait, how? How did you get in? Sorry, maybe, oh, Chris, did you end up getting RSW ETH? Is that how you uh, did that? Because like, I'm a little confused how, because I think by the time that we kind of knew about Manta being a kind of mini flop on the terms of their rewards the eigenlayer thing was all filled up because i actually looked at doing the same thing and i couldn't uh, thank you so much bro that's why i loved you from philippines hey no problem dude like listen i i understand because um you know we've all been there right like i went through one full cycle and the reason i built up a much more significant bag this time is when all these influencers were saying bitcoin was going to zero i was buying bitcoin at eighteen thousand us when everyone was saying ethereum was dead at 1200 i was buying it when Solana within said it was dead, okay, fine. I, I'll be honest. I didn't buy at 10. I bought it at 30. And then I sold it at 50 like an idiot. Like, like a lot of influencers won't tell you that. A lot of, I don't even want to call myself an influencer. But a lot of people will just tell you, no, I bought it here and I went all the way. Bitcoin I didn't sell because I believe in Bitcoin. For Solana, I was like, uh, 30 to 50. Oh, it's amazing. And I feel stupid. I sold it and it's 100. And I bought it back at 95. So I'm not saying like no one's perfect. Our goal here is to capture as much of the move as possible. This is sort of why I talk so much about the importance of preparation and doing your research because time will actually help you. People want to take shortcuts and that's why these people on uh, on Twitter make these stupid threads with a bunch of garbage trying to just farm you for like likes and attention and like bookmarks. Like I said, that's why they make these like 20 thread things that you'll never remember because they can't make it simple for you. They can easily make it simple, but they don't want to. Why? Because otherwise, how are they going to get you to bookmark it? You're not going to bookmark it. They said, go to this website because then you just bookmark the website. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys haven't done it already, and you know what? Maybe I'll do a, a, a video on just here are the test nets you should do. The problem is, uh, you know, this weekend is super busy. I'm actually like an, half an hour late for the poker game. I was sort of supposed to be the dealer. Uh, so I got to run. But guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I'll probably be on later tonight. Um, maybe in like eight, nine hours, I will take my laptop over to the game and write up some topics for a video that I'm thinking about. And, you know, if you're there, perfect. If not, we'll watch later. All right. You know, thank you guys. You know, really appreciate it. We got Chris here saying, Kelp Dao and Aether Fi will stake your ETH for you on the 5th. Yeah, exactly. On the 5th. Everything on, on the 5th, all of these things are opening. That's why I'm, I'm saying swell. And that's because, because of Q1, right? The, the thing I want to emphasize is Anytime we have certainty on something, that is like, there's so much speculation when we got the certainty, right? When you go here, uh, where is it? And here, uh, in their docs, if you go to their docs, they say Q1 of 2024 is the 
S uh, swell token. And I've been watching this, like literally, you know, I come in here to see how many pearls I have because I'm a little neurotic. But the Voyager map over the last like two months has really filled out. It was like back here back then. And it's been coming down here. They just got RSW ETH. And the next step is Swell City. So for me, I'm like, hey, I really want to earn that airdrop and I'm going to keep going. That'd be, that, that'd be cool. Sell it. Take it out. I'll make a video on how to capture your airdrops, how to capture your profit, what you do. But I really want you guys to sort of get in the trenches. Go on Galaxy, please. For those of you who don't have a Galaxy account, I'm telling you, you're missing out by not doing it. There are just incredible opportunities. Some of the most profitable people on Manta, they got them because they went and literally did campaigns. So my recommendation for you, if you've got some time today or whenever, Go to galaxy.com, G-A-L-X-E.com. Go down here, look for any of the protocols that are recognizable, right? Like, you know, if you see like Barachain, if you see like ZK Sync, if you see Orbiter Finance, whatever, look for those things for now. And I will post links to the ones that I think are good in another video, but do that, follow them. And when you follow them, you get a following list, like your subscriber list. And then I know whenever something's coming up, so I'll know, okay, look, ZK link, log X, DOP, right? So this is the one I was talking about the other day. Doing DOP, like I, I had done the test net. I have videos on all these things. So watch my content. You'll see some of the videos for that. And it'd be great. Uh, thanks for the content. Maybe you can make a Discord tutorial video. Oh, like how to stack that? Yeah, no, I, I should. Because it's also brutal for me. <laughs> but these are the things that like, I'm telling you, these are free pretty much like especially on test nets bear chain um dop do these immediately get oh metis what am i saying metis do that one too i think they're about done season one they're very close get in it now you'll be kicking yourself if you don't earn something what these typically do is they will either give you an nft or some sort of role and that role when they launch is going to be worth a ton an example I will give you is Omnibus. So Omnibus, um, Omnibus ZK Sync. So Omnibus ZK Sync um, is an NFT that they gave out to people early on for activities. Uh, here we go. Libertus Omnibus. By owning this NFT, you can now go in their Discord and actually like, or like you know, you get access to all these other things. That role is going to be important. I'm pretty sure when ZK Sync launches your token. And the thing is worth like over a hundred bucks and you had to do nothing. You know what I mean? These are the things like if you're able to get into these things now, just stack these NFTs quietly, do your other things. They're very, like very small effort. And then you profit later. You can even sell these things. Like if you look at Chroma, I talked about Chroma so much guys and Chroma, every inter iteration you did, you made $110. Like you could have sold the NFT for 150, the quest master. It costs you like 40 bucks, maybe 50 bucks at the highest point to do it. If you have multiple social accounts, you could have done the same thing and you would have been golden. These are ways to make money and you have to be on the lookout for that. Because remember, the people who have tons of money don't need to do this. They can use their wealth just as like an anchor to make more wealth. If you don't have that, this is your opportunity. So please in the comments below, I don't want to see comments like, hey, crypto shouldn't be like this. Listen, I wish it wasn't this way, but we've got to deal with the reality. The reality says, hey, you need money to make money in certain protocols. Well, that's just what it is. If you don't, you either make more money by doing test nets, by doing these Galaxy campaigns, Zeely, Intract, Layer 3, whatever, right? You do those campaigns or you do the test nets as well. Create some wealth, go off chain, create some more wealth, bring that back. Now you're the whale. Do that. That's how you win. Uh, blast, blast lol NFTs on Galaxy. What do you do with those? S sorry, uh, I, I don't know what that means. Uh, any NFTs you gain here, Make sure you're following them so you're a space user and make sure you're there in Discord. So every project, I have three rules. And you know what? That's actually a great topic. I'm going to make a video, my rules for every project you enter, and I'm going to tell you guys exactly what to do. And I think if you do that for, for all these projects and you have them documented, I think you guys will be set. That's a great idea. That's going to be my topic. I'll do that uh, maybe tonight. We'll see if i got some time. Otherwise, we'll do it Sunday. Uh, I have a couple house showings and stuff. But... I got to run for the poker game, got to make some money, uh, and we'll talk soon. And the STTS staking website, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to go ask the people in like the 
in Strive Zone exactly why that link is hidden. I'm sure it's just a bug. I would not worry about it, okay? These guys have these guys have a ton of TVL. Don't worry. How do you know or how can you be sure the quest master was going to be worth more than you what you put in? I'll explain that in that video. How's that? Once again, it gets very complicated. There's a lot of dynamics, right? So like it's an issue of supply demand is also an issue of sort of optics, sort of dilutionness, and also like the effort and some things people were unable to do, right? So like, obviously, like if, if it wasn't, then you wouldn't. And that's also why I said when they first come on, if you're the first to do it, sell it because people will buy it from you first. And people ask me, why'd you buy? I sold my first quest master for 0 0.07 and now it's 0. Sorry, 0 0.07 ETH. And now it's 0 0.035 ETH. Look at the comments of that first video where I said, sell this now. Half the comments were like, you guys, you're making a mistake. No, these are farm tokens. Anyone can make them. Look at that that way. If anyone can make them, as time goes on, their value will go down onto a certain point. Onto the point where people are like, wait, now nah, this is the floor. That's what, how you should treat a lot of these things. It all, all depends on how easy it is to dilute. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Temp. And thanks, man. Keep safe. We'll wait your next videos. Awesome. I've been on way longer than I wish I was. Guys, let me know in the comments below. Do you enjoy the Q&A periods? I got a comment on a few videos yesterday saying, hey, these videos are way too long. I don't want to deal with it. But I'm like, the first five, 10 minutes are like the content. The rest, I open it up so you guys get whatever you need. You guys get your questions and answers in. Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already, hit the like button share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.